we've got Nick's um, white heart memory lane, haven't we, Nick? Uh, have we? Right. <laughs> 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 Just sprung it on you there. Um, it on me. Okay. Yeah, are you ready? I'm ready. Even Magnus Magnuson, we should me. begin. Um, why Spurs? How did you become a Spurs fan? Because I, I like, well, I don't know, I, like everyone, I think we uh, we like being disappointed. Uh, <laughs> get get really excited and then we just get disappointed. No, I think um, I was, you know, I was quite young. Um, and young and naive. Young and naive and didn't know what, you know, I didn't want to, I guess, follow the norm. And support that's when they me. get you. Yeah, and that's, you know, and that's, and that's when they, they get you. So, yeah, I mean, I think I was about, I think 14, 15 playing cricket at, um, at a local club and a, a few of the players there supported Spurs and being young and naive and not wanting to, you know, rock the boat as I was only sort of started playing with the adults, I kind of veered towards Spurs through through them, really. So. <laughs> You've regretted it ever since. <laughs> <laughs> no, but uh, yeah, I, I guess, you know, that, that, that was, that was really... That was really it, you know. I kind of, I guess there's, there's probably there is a there is a similar Harry Kane picture with me in an Arsenal shirt, probably when I was eight years old. So, uh, you know, it, it obviously he's gone on to do a get bit of out work. now. <laughs> so he's gone on to, to to better things rather than, than kind of I have. But you know, I think it was a case of, you know, that was yeah, there was there was you know that that didn't really last long, so which was good, but. Uh, Oh, but, yeah. the Queen's face down there. He's disgusted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, but no, so yeah, and that's that's really how I've become, you know, to be a Spurs fan. Obviously, a lot of people around the area support Spurs where we live. Um, and then obviously through various cricketing teams and everything else that I've kind of gone on to, that there's always been someone. And then I've obviously met you guys and Gaz and everything else. So it's kind of just, just followed. I think we, we, you know, we follow each other around like a, like a bad. Yeah. Club, but, where where was the cricket club the, the, where you originally? It was, it was got... Penn Street. Okay. So yeah, just, just in between, uh, just outside of Amersham. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. For those um, that, you know? Yeah. Those in the know. Um, the first home game. This, can you remember the score and the score? Uh, it was, you... We lost. <laughs> um, we were playing Stoke City. Um, I think it was 2014. Um, mm -hmm. It was uh, it was the first game that I'd ever been to, and um, Bugden's obviously Mr. Bugden's wonderful wife's uh, Frank. dad, Frank, had a ticket in the Gary Mabbott Lounge, um, and it was the first time of going to a football game. Um, Obviously, Spurs lost, but and it was just a bit of a bit of a strange experience because it was you, you walked out and then kind of sat in these nice seats, and then yeah. you kind of didn't feel like you could cheer, and then you walk back in again at half time. Everyone's glaring at you like who the fuck are you lot coming in here, and then you kind of just went, oh, well done, well done, well done, chaps, and that was about it. So you didn't feel like you could. Kind of get who, involved. So who was the who was the legend in the lounge with? Because Gary Mabbott used to have guests in coming in and out, didn't he? Was um, Gary it was Mabbott just, in there? It was just Gary Mabbott. Yeah, Gary Mabbott came, uh, and it was yeah, it was my first. I mean, it was nice, but I wouldn't want to do it again if that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, no, Gary Mabbott was there. Um, nice meal, but um, yeah, I don't think ultimately it was we lost. <laughs> Yeah, ultimately we lost. Obviously, Crouchy just returned, so it was a good reception for him. Um, I think we were one nil down inside thirty minutes, um, something like that. 20, 20 mm. to thirty minutes. Um, I'm sure Res can find it as, as I'm talking. But, <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, we lost. Ultimately, we played rubbish and we lost two one. So did oh, we scored then? Who scored for us? Um, do you know what? I'm waiting on Res. Hopefully, <laughs> <laughs> it was it was someone that memorable. I don't know whether it was Nasser Chadley, maybe. Um, yeah, so, yeah, Chadley. So, there you go. So yeah, I remember more than I, I. I think I remember the food more than I do the game. So, <laughs> <laughs> Kettle <of> surprise. <laughs> so, yeah. No, he's got his game. priorities right. He's yeah. got his priorities yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. Exactly. Have you got the line up there, Res? Who's that? Uh... Yeah. Just bring it up now. 
if my Wi-Fi decides to work. Here we go. Right. Uh, let's have a look. So Pochettino in charge, apparently. Oh, no, maybe not. Maybe I've got the wrong game. Have oh, I got the right game? Harry. Right. Did we lose 2-1 that one? Ah, different game that we also lost 2-1 to Stoke at home. This would have been, two thousand, yeah, 2018. Sorry, wrong game. Bit of a bogey team then. Yeah, isn't it? Um, here we go, 2014, is it? Yeah, here we go, right. Yeah, 2014. So, let's see the lineups. Lineups, four Spurs. Lloris in goal. Uh, back four of Norton, Kabul, Fazio and Rhodes. <laughs> is there any wonder we lost? Yeah, midfield two of Kapue and Ryan Mason. Then Townsend, Ericsson and Chadley in front of them and Kane up top. And, and uh, Norton, Norton got sent off in that game. Do you remember that, Nick? No. no. <laughs> Who scored our goal? Uh, our goal was Chadley. Chadley again. He like scored against Stoke, didn't he? Yeah. Oh, yeah. So that one was Chadley. Um, 77 minutes, but we were already 2-0 down by that point. And then Norton got sent off on the 85th minute uh, and probably put the result to bed, I would say. I don't remember that at all. That's probably yeah. there. Um, Nick, who's the manager? Finished... Yeah, who's the manager? In manager was Pochettino. Yeah. This well, was because yeah, was... he was the one that bought Mason through, wasn't he, Kev? So I guess it would have been yeah. around around that time. It's 2014. So, yeah. Um, someone yeah, put on Twitter, Twitter the other day, um, Kev, that, that there was a goal that Ryan Mason scored, you know, when he got clumped by the keeper, when he sort of Played a little one-two and he broke through. That might have been Stoke as well. And I remember at the time it, he was playing beautifully at the time, and we thought we got a right gem on our hands here. And, he, and he'd hurt his knee in that challenge. He, he said he had to play on for like the next three months with a really bad knee injury. And uh, it was it was just when he was starting to like we like me and Rez were talking backstage about Skip starting to stamp his authority in the team. So it was similar to Ryan Mason. He was starting to do that at the time, and then he got that injury and then dropped out of the team, and he never really found his way back again did he but what might have been if yeah. he had a, and he, he injured himself scoring the goal didn't he so what might have been bravery to go forward and challenge with the keeper to, to put it in um mm. what were we going to say kev no i'm just listening and going along with the general right. dialogue okay yeah. um nick first away game well that there, there hasn't been one yet I'm ah, still, look at that I'm still <laughs> trying to get to one Obviously, the possibilities enough, are endless. I don't have enough points because Levy's chopped all mine from when I got my season ticket. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, so I haven't, there hasn't been, it's not, you know, all, all your tales, uh, it's going to be quite short and sweet can, compared to everyone else. So, fair enough. First Spurs shirt. Was the Holston Adidas? What was that? 19. I'm just trying to 98, think. 98, Janola's one, wasn't it? 98, 99. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, that was my first one. And that was because it was, it was the, but there was the buzz and excitement around actually having a decent shirt sponsor. Yeah, after, after, yeah. after the pony years, the Baron pony yeah, years. After the Baron pony years. And it was just like, oh, we got Adidas. And then it was like, oh, it's, it's kind of gone. Yeah, that's the one. That one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got that. I've got that one with Janola on the back somewhere. I've got it. I've got it around here. Still my original one. I can still fit into it. I yeah, I don't. I, really... I can't fit into mine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, available uh, on available on eBay for forty five pounds. Original, oh dear. Apparently. Available on what's that site, Nick? <laughs> DH Gate. <laughs> DH Gate for probably about five pounds. Probably about five pounds, but you got to wait six months for it to arrive. At this stage, we could probably get a sponsorship logo zipping across here, sponsored by DH Gate. Yeah, I want to get that Le green Le Champions League one from them. Leave, leave your lovers shut down, mate. If he sees anything that doesn't have the official Tottenham Hotspur shop on it, it's fine. Just, just, just offer him a cut. <laughs> well, sure that that be his first. I bought this and the other top from the shop, so you know. Yeah, exactly. I, I, that's I such like a levy thing to do as well though isn't it Rez like if you found a site knocking off cheap ones just say just give me a cut and I'll let you carry on well, you see, there, was, <laughs> there was one of them yeah, LJ the one that we I got the other kits from they were, yep. they kept having it taken down on Facebook because Levy or someone at the club had found out and they were like we're not stocking any 
shirts from Spurs because we keep getting taken offline and everything else because they're reporting it. And then I had a shirt that I'd got and I tried to put it on Facebook Marketplace and then it got this has been removed because it's been reported for being not from a knockoff. the knockoff. Hooky. Yeah. Yeah. Hooky gear from Hooky the Stelios yeah, Green there. Yeah, it's from my Greek connections. Yeah, yeah. Um, who was your first Spurs hero when you first started sporting him? Who was the guy that made you think, oh, I, like, I, like, I like this guy? Well, it, it was it was David Ginola, I think. Um, just, you know, with the shirt, the flowing locks, obviously doesn't remind me of myself or Rez or Kev <laughs> or Jens. Right. I've got flowing. What about <laughs> my flowing you, know, locks? Jay, with the, yeah. you're, you're the only one with the flowing locks out of yeah. all of us. Yeah, um, so yeah it was just, you know, I think it was just played played the, the brand of football that we all love to watch and we've not seen for a long time um and yeah it just you know it's a breath of fresh air and yeah that was you it's know. quite um apt isn't it that uh we as of yesterday we're talking about an enigmatic flamboyant frenchman coming to rescue our team <laughs> he's, he's inconsistent and doesn't really defend but he's brilliant on the ball and makes you love watching football in the spirit of Ginola Tatanga. Um, you just reminded me, do you know, David Ginola used to have a website um, and he used to interact with fans. He used to have questions of the week. So I was, as a probably 14, 15 year old, I sent in the question to him. Um, my, I remember my question is like, who do you um, room with on away days? And he, he had this thing, weekly thing called Radi Radio Ginola. I, Radio Ginola. And he used to read out questions from the fans every week. And he actually read out my question so i i had it as my ringtone on my phone for ages like and my text message alert it's like this next question is from john from amisham i was like come on my life is peaked that's it no more and the, the radio the the website's down now so i can't i was, I was going to get it digitally like downloaded and stuff so david was, if you're watching he was also <laughs> on a on the danny baker show with fatima whitbread <laughs> that i've just found I'm not sure. Well, I think well, that my was question. A... How did my question find its way via fast? I, I don't think your question question went there, but I think that was after probably. I mean, they probably should have taken that link down, not the not the not the one of your uh, David Ginola. Oh, Radio, Radio. Ginola. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so yeah. hopefully his servers have stored it somewhere, and I can retrieve my my question where where the the day me and David shared the universe. You know, and he he answered my question and said my name. Um, yeah, what's the next one? Here we go. Favorite all time Spurs player, favorite all time Spurs player <clears throat> was, yeah, it has, to be, it has to be Jimmy, really. I think you know, I think Kev hit, hit the nail on the head there. Just you know, we were talking about and looking at those records and just. Looking at the pitches that they played on, and you can imagine Jimmy Greaves on the pitches now. Um, he would be unbelievable. It was unbelievable then, just but to see, you know, see him on the absolute carpets that they're playing now, and I think you know everyone said it. He would just be ridiculous. There's, you know, even even now looking at the records, and only Messi and Ronaldo are ahead of him, and you just yeah. think that it's, you know, I don't see how anyone's gonna that anyone's gonna you know get ahead of him apart from you know those two and I, I you know the records will stand and just you know that i think he you know on sunday um obviously we'll come to the game but on sunday in the reception i don't know about what you and res thought lj but i got quite emotional um and it was you know it was really loud and it was a fitting fitting send off it was you know i guess there's no perfect timing so to speak but if there was a perfect game that would have been it would have been sunday's game um yeah. and i Shame think about our performance yeah exactly um exactly so um that didn't live up to what should have been but yeah jimmy greaves 100%. it's um a great there's a great jimmy story if, it, if i can share at this point of course you can, yeah of course you can. when he was at when he was at chelsea and he was still in the youth team he was playing in this game and the the uh, Chelsea manager, I think it was Ted Drake at the time, uh, came to watch the youth play, and Jimmy scored seven goals in the game. 
and Drake went up to him after the game to congratulate him. He congratulated him. He said, but um, enjoy it, Jimmy, because this will never happen again. The very next game, Jimmy scores eight. <laughs> <laughs> someone, someone said, what, what player in the modern era would he be comparable to? And um, I, think, I, I think it was Steve Perriman and Graham Roberts said it was um, Sergio Aguero, the, the kind of you know player that Aguero is, but obviously better than Aguero, but that kind of player, like a deadly... Deadly marks, you know, sharpest over a yard, nipping in front of people, finishing from all angles and, and stuff. He was a similar player to that, the way he glided around. And I can see this resemblance is there, really. Obviously, Jimmy's goal record stands for itself, doesn't it? What a left foot. Isn't it remarkable that a lot of the um, all-time greatest players have been left-footed? Maradona, Messi, um, Jimmy Greaves. Um, what was George Best, Kev? Was he a lefty or a righty? Uh, he's ambidextrous or, or PD dexterous, I don't know how you call it, but um, I'm not too sure about Greaves. I thought he was right footed. Well, that, that, that's testament to that because some of the left foot finishes he scored, it, it didn't matter. Yeah, that, yeah, that, those truly important stars. I think I'm fairly sure Best was right footed, but he could equally score with his left or you know, that's what when we were kids it, and we were watching live Georgie Best and Greaves, we also practiced. Religiously, I don't know about you guys down the line, but we were practicing left and right. It was a thing we did. You know, my it grand, was, that's yeah, what grand, we were told by yeah, the coach to do. He said, um, if you were uh, predominantly right footed, he used to, the coach used to tell you to take your right boot off and wear, just wear a sock on that one and then, then the boot on your left foot. So you practice your left foot. So because because the balls were so hard in those days that you wouldn't kick it with your other foot, would you? So that mm. my, my gramp said so that's what, the, what their coaches used to make them do take the boot off of their favoured foot. To, so they worked on their on their weaker foot. Um, speaking of Jimmy Greaves, that was my granddad's favourite player. He, um, he grew up around Essex, uh, around the same area as Jimmy, and he was from the same sort of, I don't know, the same sort of town, the same sort of area. So it was a bit... Dagenham. Um, yeah, Dagenham, it was a bit yeah. it was a bit, um, bit sweet for me when Jimmy passed because he was like a link to my granddad that had, had gone, you know, as his favourite favorite player. And uh, he was talked about Jimmy Greaves and and uh, you could see the um, esteem in which he held held Jimmy. Yeah, it was... It was Shocking news. We'd just come off the pitch, actually. We, we, we played our Sunday league game and one of the Chelsea guys goes, Jimmy Greaves had died. And I was just going around shaking hands with the other other players. I just wasn't in the mood after that. It was just genuinely just mm. flattened me, you know, like a really bad news. It's just like, oh, no. And, you know, we'd heard rumours that he was ill and stuff. But, yeah. Um, so, um, let's let you take this point from Cody um, while we're on the subject of Jimmy Greaves. Uh, Kev, we'll start with you. What are your thoughts on the statue debate? Um, uh, Cody says, no debate for me. Greaves, Nicholson, Rowe should all have sta statues, probably Blanche Flower as well. Mm -hmm. What's your view on, on it and, and more? Why, why do you think Levy's so adverse to having statues? Um, looking at that lot down the road, they've got statues and they're a bit on the cheap side, I think. Um, probably because they've honoured people that were like one or two season wonders, I think. And, you know, um, all right, you've got, uh, those, I don't know. Greaves, I think, is an exception. I think he really is. But um, Nicholson, don't know. definitely. And, and Arthur Ray as well, as Cody says. Yeah, but then you go, then you go Mackay, you know, mm. you know, Perryman, you know, yeah, Mabbott. Yeah. Yep. How far do you go, you know? I think you can make an mm. argument. You can make an argument for Greaves and you can make an argument for Nicholson. Greaves, you can make an argument for because he's the greatest English goal scorer of all time. That's something that transcends club specific loyalties. Likewise, you can make an argument for Nicholson because he was the first manager to win the double in the modern era and he was the first manager to win uh, a European trophy for a British club. So those are, are arguments that you can make. Um, okay, fine. Yeah, you know, that that then um, precludes the likes of Mackay and Blanche Flower and Arthur Rowe and people like that. But there is an argument for those. And I think that, but what I think the reason that Levy won't do it is because it adds too much club specific character to his entertainment complex. Um, you know, what's an NFL fan going to think when they mm -hmm. come in to watch, you know, the the Green Bay Packers playing the... the 
surely that's an opportunity London fairy boys or whatever you know an opportunity to convert them to be Tottenham fans though isn't it they'll see the statues and they'll learn about the history like you've just uh you would hope you would think yeah but it's it's it you know the one the one thing about the stadium is that it's it's got it's got character it's got Spurs branding but it's quite on a program wall yeah yeah it's quite unobtrusive it's sort of it's little small details in amongst the enormity of a thing and it's beautiful i'm not saying it's not it's ugly or anything like that it's a wonderfully constructed building but the character is not in your face it's i'd be very... interested to see what his policy is on it because he keeps saying it's not our policy to have statues what mm. why is it your policy not to have statues well, I can't think of any good reason why he wouldn't. I mean, he's Isn't obviously he? got his reasons that he's sticking to. If he's if he's got his policy and he's sticking to it, what is the policy? It, well, it'd have to be maintained, wouldn't it? So that means he's got to pay someone to look after it. So what a marble statue inside the inner, you know, confines well, of the it, stadium. Well, you know? Yeah, but you you know you you would think that actually the perfect place would it for 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 the what we're talking about is at the, on the concourse by the south stand where you've got. Mm -hmm. Yeah, all you've of got that you go in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got yeah. that apron there that would yeah. be a perfect kind of fit, but then yeah, yeah, it's, keep it it's perfect spot, perfect spot for it. You do it in bronze. You yeah, do it in bronze. It's not that expensive. You know, it's not that difficult to maintain. You just do it in bronze, and you just put it put I, it out there, and it's done. I think he's got a personal issue with Greaves because there was also every time we 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 did petitions, and there was pressure on him to help out with Jimmy's. Um, health, you know, uh, bills and stuff. He always he was very dead against it, wasn't he? And like, come out with these snotty answers about, you know, um, oh, we we contribute enough to the former players' association we, without doing specific players Thank and you. stuff. So he's, Jimmy Greaves obviously said something about Levy. I bet we, I bet if we search, we can find some disparaging quotes by Greaves mm. about Levy, and that's that's what's behind it—a personal issue which he's letting get in the way of of uh, his feelings towards Greaves. I'm sure. And I just can't think of any good reason why he me. wouldn't. Can't it think wouldn't of any surprise good me. Reason. We, we know we know how petty he can be. We know how petty and sort of childish he can be. That's you know? why Perryman doesn't go back often because he's, yeah. he's said a few things about Levy, and he won't. Mm -hmm. He's not. He doesn't suffer fools gladly, does he, Perryman? He, he'll stick by his words. Yeah. It's it's um, Levy. You know, you you tow the party line. Yep. And well, he'll. You know. Yeah, and you're in. You know, you say one word. And you're out. You know that's why you know Mather is is sort of one of the poster boys. That's why Ledley's one of the poster boys. These aren't men that will speak out about certain things. You know, um, you can see them. The the more outspoken the player. That's why Ginola has sort of kept slightly at arm's length because there's always that possibility that he well, not necessarily deliberately, but he'll just say something that isn't isn't. PR friendly, yeah, yeah, you know, can't be sort of fitted into the thing, you know. So he's not, he's sort of over there, please, David. You know? Then, with um, regards to, uh, to the Arthur Rowe discussion from Cody, there's an argument there as well, Res, because the um, as, as legend has it, that's where Barcelona picked up their ticky tacky style from, <coughs> from Arthur Rowe's push and run style. There was an English yeah. coach who went over to Spain and, and they adapted it from, from that. So he has had a big impact on football, yeah. obviously, push and run side, which Nicholson's team developed mm -hmm. out of. So I can see why Cody's gone, gone for sure. that as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Blanche Flower, what, yeah. what a, what a, an orator he was. Uh, mm -hmm. Have you ever, have you seen that interview of him? Um, I think it was on Parkinson or whatever, and he's talking about the ills of the game at the time, probably early eighties. I think it was. Yeah. Um, very clever man, isn't he? Very had some mm. great ideas about the game and where we were, where everything was going wrong. What were your memories of Blanche Flower, Kev? Uh, too late from uh, too, too much before my time, really. Yeah, with the Irish connection yeah. as well. In Northern Ireland, but that's not a political statement. Either, <laughs> by the way, um, yes, yeah, Sammy. Um, no, he, he finished playing by the time I started watching, to be honest. My favourite yeah, Blanche Flower moment is when Eamon Andrews went to present him with his This Is Your Life book and he said no and walked away. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. Um, um, but so I mentioned about the... Sorry. 
go on, go on, Kev. I was, I was, I was just about to say, we were talking about statues, and I switched to Arsenal there. I had a quick look while they were talking. Three of the statues outside Arsenal are of living players. That's Bergkamp, um, Tony, Tony Adams, and Thierry Henry. They're still alive. I mean, why, mm. Why? you know, it's like Madame Tussauds, you know what I mean? It's like, it's yeah. not really... Yeah, they're not I don't know. tribute it's trophies, kind of, are they? No, nah, I don't know. They're still there. They're still, they're still, they're still, still alive but, and walking yeah. and attending then. For them, for them, you can you can make an argument for them. There are arguments for Arthur Rowe and Blanche Flower and Dave McKay and all of that stuff. You know, there's no there's no argument that says these people are not worthy of statues when it comes to their specific clubs, right? Arthur Rowe won us our first um, league championship. You know, yeah, that's important for Spurs. But the arguments for the likes of Greaves and Nicholson go beyond just what mm. they did for Spurs, which is why you can make a greater, a stronger argument for them having statues. You know, and ultimately, Chelsea could turn around and put up a statue of Greaves without any problems. You know, why are we letting them potentially do it? Why don't we just strike while the iron's hot? The greatest English goal scorer of all time. Number three on... The uh, what's it called? The top goal scorers in European in the five major European leagues. This is not Bergkamp for all his skill and his achievement for Arsenal. This is Jimmy Greaves. Yeah, you know. Maybe it's a stark reminder of the the gap between those glory years and present day. You know, you're talking yeah. fifty years uh, of embarrassment, really, and it's, it's a reminder yeah. of the the gap that's, that's opened that's up from that time to well. now. Yeah, yeah. It, that might be very well, well, Kev. Um, also, Thierry Henry is a cheat, isn't he? So he doesn't, he doesn't deserve a, a statue. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah, he's not liked in Ireland. No. We cheated the Irish players out of um, participating in uh, the World Handball. Cup, didn't he? So there's no, there's, yeah. as far as I'm concerned, there's no comebacks from that. That's just, that's just he's, he's robbed professionals of performing in a World Cup by cheating. That's a lot of time. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Those mm -hmm. some of those players will never get the opportunity again. I had this argument with some Arsenal fans over there. They were crowing about him on Monday night about what a legend he was, and I said he's a fucking cheat and he's a scumbag. I also, yeah. I was, I was also going about Salah as well in similar glowing terms because he's a cheat as well and he's always diving. They were going mm -hmm. on saying Salah how underrated he is. He's such an underrated player. So he's a fucking cheat. No one, no other clubs like him because he just dives all the time. Um, speaking of people we dislike, Nick, the next question, your most disliked Spurs player. My most disliked Spurs player? What, at the moment? <laughs> it, was all, it was all of them on Saturday, that Sunday. Um, no, I think, um, I think for me, it was, uh, there was, well, I'd have to choose two and just one because uh, of his ridiculous haircut and that was Benoit so really yeah benny and uh let's go oh, benny yeah and uh, look at look at the look at the look at the disgust uh, uh or uh pascal chimbonda um was another one for me that uh, i think i've really upset res now it's gonna be on his rant now He's didn't you watch like... didn't you watch last week's show nick we were going about how much we love disco benny me Gaz, no. and res and everyone we yeah, love no, disco benny. yeah. going on there and everything else so Sorry, boys, but uh, yeah, it was just again had had the substance, you know, and a, a, a bit, but had the attitude a bit like Tanganga, Rorier, and the like. So, um, yeah. So Aaron's on about um, Thierry, the cheat on Ray. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, must be a fullback thing. If you go, if you could go back in time to watch one famous go game in Spurs history, which one would it be? <laughs> I mean, I think who was it? Who was it that said they'd, they'd want to go back to the Ajax semi final? I think someone said that the other week. Um, but I think I'd want to go back to the 91 Cup semi final when Gaza smashes that goal in. I think that would have been, you know, that, that was almost, I mean, you can find, you can find our, our video of me, LJ, Gaz, Needs all over Facebook when that third Lucas Mora goal went in. But, I think you'd be you'd be hard fetched to to see any you know the, well there will there'll be no Facebook or internet or anyone of anyone cheering up and down but I just think just seeing being there and 
taking it in for pure atmosphere and obviously against Arsenal as well. Um, I mean, there's you know there's there's plenty of games that we could all choose, but I'd, I think I'd love to have seen Gaza play and 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 seen him smash that goal in. So excellent, yeah. I remember I said that on here before. My granddad came around to watch with me, and I, but I was so nervous and about the game that I was watching upstairs and I just remember Gaza smashing that free kick in and it was like game one and I went went downstairs and watched the rest of the game with my granddad after that. What was your favourite era in your team? I mean, obviously, because I haven't had a lot to go on. Um, being <laughs> a fairly young Spurs fan in terms of compared to, especially compared to Kev and, you know, a few of the other boys, it would... You know, it'd have to be, I, I would say, that last season at the lane. Um, that would probably be, for me, the, the the best that I've probably seen us play as a team uh, together. Um, I can't really judge it on anything probably before that because we were shit before that. But... As, as featured on that DVD that I bought the other day, Nick. It's yeah, in, yeah. Like, it's, in, it's in the buckets as you queue up to the in the shop now. It's like the, the last season at the lane uh, DVD bonus um which player got you the most excited when you first heard the news of their signing um i think out of i think for me it was bale coming back um now we unfortunately we didn't get the opportunity to see him <laughs> um or some of us you know because of everything going on um or, or some of us would have done but I think it was just the excitement and the buzz and, and everything else. I mean, there's been, you know, you, you look at all the signings and you see like on this day and you see through all the all the players that we signed. And I just think that actually it created that that buzz again around the, with the fans. Um, there was a lot of people um, we were talking and then, you know. You've just uh, reminded me I forgot to do Spurs on this day, didn't I? Yeah. The viewers, yeah. The viewers will be livid. They'll be livid. <laughs> um, That's yeah, all they're in for. They don't want to hear us. I yeah, know. they don't want to listen to the rest of it. They just hear my crappy little book. In history and that's it. And they switch off. Um, so, yeah, I think, yeah, for me, it was, yeah, that was, you know, there was a buzz. You could see all the, see the, see that everyone actually was, you know, it was, it was that excitement again. There was, you know, because obviously we hadn't signed I think we thought um, Levy could pull it off with the financials, did we? Because of the wages no. involved. Yeah. And, that, and that's the other, that's the other thing. Every, as soon as you, you got that, you got that kind of hint and then you thought could it nah of course it can't it's yeah, leaving not with leaving yeah. you know this is this isn't going to happen and then it did happen and i think that was when it's you know because you we don't you know we don't expect it <laughs> we don't expect signings <laughs> or we don't expect you know decent ones or or fairly decent ones or we haven't in the past few years so coherent yeah. ones or yeah or oh oh we need a creative midfielder let's sign an, another right back that's you know so um, i'm sure there's a plan there somewhere yeah yeah, yeah. So, oh yeah. oh there is there is go, go on we'll come to that. Oh, yeah, go on. To, it's yeah every every player that levy purchases is done for financial reasons it's not done for footballing reasons first anyway yeah if you've got if you've got a choice between player a which would make footballing sense but makes no financial sense and you've got player b that makes less footballing sense but makes financial sense he'll go for player b every time jack Clark every session, time. John. yeah okay because it's not about we, we, we <laughs> this is where we make the mistake and this is fed by the likes of sky and the bbc and all that stuff at the end of every transfer window saying how much have premier league clubs spent on players the answer is actually zero. We don't spend anything because when we purchase a player, we don't, you know, when Jack Grealish went to Man City, Aston Villa's bank account didn't go from like £4.37 to £100 million and £4.37 when he was holding up that shirt. The way that a player transfers is that the cost is spread across the length of their contract and it also includes their wages. So Grealish, let's say you're accounting every month, on Man City's books, he'll appear as Jack Grealish, two and a half million a month, because he's got a six-year contract of two hundred thousand a week. If you do the maths, that's what it comes out as. It's actually less every month because it's all about the big finances. This isn't. It's no longer a case of 
you know, signing a check and sending a fax. This is big business, big finance you're talking about. Um, so the key indicator is what I've mentioned before is the wages to turnover ratio. And on that score, Spurs are rock bottom of the league. We spend the smallest proportion of our turnover on playing staff out of everyone, right? The last figures I found were 46%. The next step up team in 19th was Sheffield United who spent 54% of their turnover. And that was the biggest step change between as you go up the table, apart from once, which was Brighton and Everton, right? The reason we don't have a, a, a well-managed, well-formed squad is because we make decisions based on the finances rather than on what makes sense on the pitch. And that has always been the case with Levy. Reinvestment opportunity, yeah. Mm. Hence, again, Jack Clark and, and Sessegnon. Yeah. Can't you do yeah, both? I went completely surely off surely can't you do both in an ideal world? So say we need a left back, for example. Surely you, th you look at the available options on the left back and the, then Levy can go, well, he's probably better now, but this guy, we can probably make more money in the long run. We'll go for him. But he just has a scattergun approach. We can make more money if we sign these 16 right wingers kind of thing. It doesn't make, make sense, does it? Which is... It's opportunistic. He's, he's an opportunistic signing signing person. Transfer like, we, person. like we said last week with Paratici as well. Paratici. Yeah. That's yeah. an opportunity. He was available on a free because he was leaving Juventus. Levy wouldn't have had to pay any money. Director yeah. of football will get him in, get the flack off of me for a while. He's got contacts yeah. in Italy and other different contacts. We'll be able to fleece him for a few years. <coughs> And, and, and I think I think why the Triore deal didn't go through, the financial decision behind it was that he Thanks would so cost a lot of money while he was with us on a monthly basis. And then at the end of that, there is very little comeback. Again, we've got to, you know, you sort of start diving into, into the depths of sort of those nitty gritty of the finance. And my own education isn't complete on that, I'll have to say. But it's all about you know, it's all about the finances with him. And the reason that, and I think with Paratici, what he's done is that he shackled him really quite hard to say, you can't really buy, you know, players with quite high sticker prices unless they're really young. You know, that's why we yeah. bought Romero, because he's young. But we didn't buy Traore, because he's not as young. Yeah, depressing times. Um Nick, let's take it back up a level to less depressing times. Less depressing. Uh, if you could have scored one famous goal in Tottenham history, which one would it be? Apart from Gaza's free kick, obviously. Apart from Gaza's, well, it would have to be, uh, well, any of Mora's three against Ajax, really. Um, I think, you apart, know. Apart from that one as well, those apart three. Apart from that one as well. <laughs> you just, uh, you just... Um, They're off the table. You are well. You do what, what? You keep asking me these questions. I'm giving answers, and you don't like the answer. So you're trying to give me another. You know, give me, give me another one. Um, you know, I'm feeling so it's tough at the top. Go for, go for Greavesy second against Atletico Madrid. Greavesy second against Atletico Madrid. There Apart from Greavesy second against <laughs> Atletico. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not having any of that. Come on, we've already, we've already. Uh, I've given you three there. You have you ever got in? Have you ever got into a game hoping we'd lose to expedite no. a manager's sacking? No, like with Fair Reds, enough. you know we, you know we support the manager as as much as we don't like what's going on in the pitch. I think it's you know there's no, you know I don't think it's you know for us to go in there hoping that we're going to lose. And you know if you look look at what happened to Martin Yo at half time or whatever and everything else, it's you know that's that wasn't good. So yeah, I would say no. Um, what's the loudest atmosphere you've ever heard at the old or new lane? Um, I thought it was, well, it was pretty loud for about five minutes uh, on Sunday, but that was about it. Um, but no, I think it was it was that it was that game against United um, when we scored those three quick goals. Um, and I, I don't think you'll ever, I don't think you'll ever replicate the noise at the lane. Um, uh, you know, because it was spine tingling, and yeah, you know, like I said, the, I mean, obviously, I wasn't at the Man City game, and it was pretty loud for you know five minutes <laughs> on Sunday, but um, but yeah, I think that would have to be for me. It was just, you know, it was just 
it, you you didn't think you were watching Spurs in that game. The just way they just took United apart. Um, so yeah, I, I was... don't think we, we've played the Gooners with the full stadium yet, have we? Or did we? In the new stadium, have we played the Goons? No, we had yeah, the I... North London derby. I think you're right, Jay. I don't think we have. Yeah. A couple behind closed doors. And th- I guess this year will be the first Rez is, one. Rez is on it. Yeah, Rez is on it. I think you're right, actually. Nick, what's your favourite match day Spurs pub? Last question. The one we the one we went into, um, I don't know what it was called, because it was the first time I in, the, in there with Gazza and Needs. I was driving, as normal. Uh, even though I don't understand why LJ doesn't drive because he doesn't drink, <laughs> but that's a different that's a different conversation. <laughs> um, it and and we went in there and you walked through, and then you had the outside bit. And I think Needs it was it was the first time I'd met Needs and Needs and Gaza were just pummeling beers down me. I think I was like <laughs> beers in and I was like, lads, I need to stop because I've got to drive. Um, so it was down past where the where the old shop was. So I don't know what it was called, but it would have been um, the Bell and Hair, I think. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I think it was. That's got yeah. a bit out of the back but with cans instead of. Yeah, 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 yeah. With cans yeah, instead of yeah, glasses yeah. and everything else. So yeah, I think I was. I think we'd done about six or seven beers in an hour, and then Needs and Gaz were like, "Come on, let's have some more." And I was a bit like, "Guys." I don't know how how I'm going to sober up to drive home if, if I'm honest. So, but you I, did. But I did. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure how much, but uh, yes, I did. If any police are watching, was I there? No, I don't think you were. Ah, I wonder where I, I was. Just, Maybe I came up later was, on. The... I think it was just needs and gas. Special needs. Yeah. Yeah, we've never we've never played Arsenal. No. With, uh, with a full house full crowd. Um, no. At the new stadium. Yeah. Something to look forward to this season. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right, and that concludes your uh, White Hart Lane, Memory Lane, My Spur story. Thank you very much, Nick, for doing that. Sprung it on you there. Thank you for springing it on me. 